Let's audit your Instagram accounts. I posted to my private Facebook group for my course students asking if anybody wanted an Instagram audit. I thought if I were to record myself giving my students a few Instagram audits and then maybe post it to YouTube, maybe some of you who are in the same niches or industries, you could learn from these tips that I'm giving them. As always, timestamps will be in the description below and without further ado, let's jump over to the laptop and start these audits. All right, jumping into our first candidate, I don't know, <laughs> our first audit, we have Mallory, casually Mallory. First things that I look at when I do an Instagram audit is like the username and profile photo, making sure that they match, they go hand in hand, and they fit your overall goal. So if your goal is to share Amazon favorites, I like that, like obviously this is a personal brand, so casually Mallory fits wonderfully, and then the profile photo is a picture of her. Perfect. I wouldn't change the profile yet unless anything else changes as we continue through the audit. Mallory Woods, I would put something more searchable in this bold part of your Instagram because the nameplate, this bold section, is the most search friendly on Instagram. So if you go over to search and you type in like tattoo artist, anyone who has tattoo artist in their nameplate will pop up in the search results. So that's something to keep in mind is how do you want to be discovered? What is your target audience looking for? Are they looking up Amazon finds or Amazon favorites? If they are, put that in your nameplate as well. So if that means you need to remove your last name and it's just Mallory, Line, Amazon finds, that's perfect. Now jumping into your bio. So your bio, sharing my favorite Amazon finds, love it fashion, beauty, lifestyle, email for contact, and then Amazon storefront, YouTube, and TikTok. Overall, this is a good bio. I would make a few changes. So the first thing that I love is the call to action, telling people exactly where to find your Amazon storefront of your favorites and other platforms. So you have a really good call to action. The one thing that I would potentially explore for the first sentence is talking about who your content is for and the type of products that you like on Amazon. Do you talk about vacuums? Are you talking about plant pots and sands? <laughs> like there's so many different products on Amazon. So obviously you kind of categorize it here, fashion, beauty, lifestyle, but is it like budget friendly? Is it for the neutral baddie? I don't know, <laughs> but who is it for? What type of Amazon finds? And then unfortunately I would have you niche down more. So nowadays, do you have to niche down in general? Yes and no. On Instagram, yes. Instagram, you have to because that's just how their algorithm was created. I have a whole video talking about that, but you need to pick one specific area because that's how the algorithm will flourish and help your content thrive. If you're talking about fashion in one video and then your favorite beauty products in another video and your coffee that you had one video or like a cleaning video, like if you're talking about a bunch of different things, you won't see a lot of rapid results. You won't see that like kind of skyrocketing results. And it's not because you're doing anything wrong. It's simply because that's not how Instagram's algorithm works. Kind of jumping ahead here, your content is really good. Like, dare I say better than mine. <laughs> I love how you're filming your content, the edits, the pace of your videos. They're spot on. I don't think there's anything wrong with your content. I think it's just on the wrong platform because if you don't want to niche down, if that's not like true to you, then this content would perform incredibly well on TikTok. On TikTok, you don't have to niche down because every video has equal chance because it's pushed to the algorithm equally. Whereas on Instagram, they're not categorizing each video, they categorize your account and then push your video to the people interested in your account's category. There's nothing wrong with your content. Your content's really good. It's just, if you wanna keep creating this content and you're like, Millie, I don't wanna change anything with what I'm doing, I would move your content to TikTok. If you're like, Millie, I don't care what I change, I want Instagram to be my platform, then I could give you some more tips. <laughs> so then what I would do 
is pick one category. I think your fashion videos perform really well when I'm looking at like engagement wise, not just plays. I'm not looking at plays. I'm looking at your audience and how people engage with it and comment on it. These videos and this one, you have great engagement on those. So it seems like your audience engages with those more than they've engaged with the Amazon unboxing. Then the next step would be go all in on one category. Let's say it's fashion and then deliver that content in multiple ways. You have different value pillars. So you have educational, entertaining, relatable, and inspirational. So how can you talk about fashion in those four ways? You have some good educational fashion. So it's like, this is ways to style this blazer. You could also educate of like, you could say top five Amazon legging favorites under $20. You know, that's educational as well. So you could categorize your videos in that way. You could also do entertaining videos where you could just be like styling an outfit. Your shots that you set up, the way you film could be the entertaining elements. Like some shots are super close and zoomed in. Some shots are far away. Maybe it's your location that keeps it engaging and entertaining. You also have inspirational. So you could show like before and afters of like, this is how I used to dress. This is how I dress now. And then relatable content that's you utilizing kind of trending audios, utilizing those sounds, and then putting text over that makes somebody laugh like, haha, oh my gosh, same. Like when my husband asks how much I've spent on Amazon this month and like you have all of your boxes and then the audio is something silly. I don't know. It relates to that. So those are the four ways I would double down on your niche and deliver it in your content. So then it goes back to if you've niched down into fashion, then I would update your profile photo to match that niche. So having a picture like this or one like this, this is a really good one. Yeah. A lot of these are really great. I like this one because it semi shows your face, but also kind of shows your overall vibe. You tend to lean more towards like those neutral looks, casual, chill, nothing too like colorful. It's just like really casual and chill. So then if you niche down towards fashion, updating your profile photo. So before moving on to the next audit, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Metricool. If you're not new here, I'm sure you're not surprised. I've been working with Metricool for over a year now, and they've genuinely just become a staple partner for me, my business, my channel. I really only partner with two brands here on my channel. So when I say I love Metricool, it doesn't come lightly. Basically, if you're looking for an all-in-one tool to help you schedule your content across in every social media platform. Plus having the extra analytics to look to see how your platforms are performing. Metricool is going to be the way to go. I did a whole video where I like tested different social media tool, like content schedulers and Metricool still came up as my number one favorite for multiple reasons. First of all, you can connect it to any of your social media platforms, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, you name it. Metrical can connect to it and you could schedule your content to auto post. So it's really easy to just like upload one video, schedule it to auto post to multiple platforms, save boom shakalaka. You really created one post and then it auto schedules to multiple places. It is so cool. I genuinely love it. Plus their analytic breakdown of showing you your previous month breakdown of like, Hey, this was your best performing post. This one gave you the highest engagement. This one gave you followers. This one was most viewed on your stories. Like there's so much data that is super helpful as me, a creator, and even for businesses that I check on a monthly basis. Metrical is completely free for you to use creators, businesses alike. You can create a free account today. If you want to try out their premium account for 30 days, you can use the code modern Millie. This will basically give you access for brand managers or businesses, social media managers. If you juggle, let's say multiple accounts per platform. So you have three Instagram accounts that you're managing, five TikTok accounts you're managing, two Facebook accounts you're managing. So you're juggling multiple logins and accounts per platform. That's what the premium account will give you access to. You can juggle all of your clients and manage them all in one place. So yeah, check out Metricool. They're pretty freaking awesome. I'll leave a link to their website down below in the description and in the pinned comment. You're welcome in advance for saving you a bunch of time with scheduling your content and sanity. Thank you, Magical. Back to the audit. 
All right, jumping over to my friend, Kaylin. Hi, Kaylin. So let's start this audit. First things I look at, granted by Kaylin and profile photo. This photo's a vibe, first of all. I feel like this would be like a cover of an album, but I don't know if it fully represents you and the mission and passion that you're trying to share with your profile. So mental health creator, I inspire people of color to elevate their healing journey through self-love and wellness. I would love to see like a picture of you making eye contact with the camera, smiling. I'm trying to see if you have like already a picture uploaded. Like something like this. I like the green in the background. It's really well lit, like that natural light on your face. Your eyes are just like sparkling. Your smile is contagious. I feel like you want to exude and you're like, yeah, that's the Kaylin that I want people to like relate to. Of course, there's also the reality of like, okay, mental health journey is a struggle and tough, but you're inspiring people. And so spreading joy and positivity is part of that. And I, I think having a picture that connects the viewer with your eyes and having that eye contact smiling would be wonderful. Mental health creator, love that your nameplate is searchable. Inspired, da, 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 da. yes. And then a call to action, support the content here. Let's just take a peek at your link in bio, support content with donation. That's so great. Oh, that's cool. My website, put me for branding and social media. Follow me on TikTok. Perfect. Perfect. Love that. That's so cool. Man, I forget how cool direct me is. <laughs> Okay. Love your bio. Everything looks good here. Moving to your highlights. One thing that I would potentially add is your story. I would love to see a highlight that says my story. Maybe that's what imperfect me is. I actually did not watch this one and I just realized it could be what I'm about to say. So ignore this advice. <laughs> if you're like Millie, it's literally there, but I'd love to see like an about me of like why this is something you're passionate about. Why is this important to you? A little bit of your background and your story and what got you here and why that this page is so important to you and what you want to inspire other people to do. So maybe adding that highlight section. Okay. Now when it comes to pinned posts, I think these two are pretty good pinned posts. I'm not sure about this one as a pinned post. So pinned posts, they have the most long-term real estate on your profile photo. And so you want those to be like the biggest character definitions of you, the biggest call to actions that you have. Maybe it summarizes who you are and your what your whole page is about because those are people's first impression. I feel like if you were to have a pinned photo, it would probably be like similar to this, a carousel of photos but I'd love to see the first one of you like smiling at the camera. And then maybe the caption is more about who you are, your background, kind of summarizing what like your about me would be on a website or in your highlight section. So when people, the first thing that they see is picture of you, who you are, your mental health journey. And so it's kind of like a summary of you. So that's why I don't think this one fits that quite yet. I'm not hearing a lot about you. There's no call to action. It's a good photo, but it's not what I would use as a pinned post. These two are really good summaries of who you are and what your page is about, especially this one. This is just like the perfect epitome of Kaylin, his profile, his content, what somebody can expect by pressing that follow button. And I, I love this video, everything about this video. I love it. So this is definitely pin post worthy. And then this one is definitely a popular video of yours and yeah, could be also a pinned post, but this one is like a hundred percent. Yes. All right. Let's give some content tips. So something I'd like you to start practicing or trying to do is how to repurpose your content within Instagram. So let me explain. You have this video, for example, natural remedies that help with anxiety. And then you have aromatherapy. This includes candles, oils, la, da, da, da. So this video, you can actually turn into a caption that goes with a photo. So maybe trying to caption some of your future photos with content you've already created, giving those tips. So maybe your next carousel or your next photo would be that natural remedies for anxiety. So I think that's something that'll help you. And like, I don't know what, I don't want like your sanity, but that's something that helps me is like, if you have these great videos that are like three steps to do this natural remedies for this, how do I identify this? Like you have so much great educational videos, 10 signs that you're healing and growing benefits of yoga. All of those can be repurposed into captions and even carousel. So you can go to Canva. You can look at templates. I'm going to type Instagram carousel and there's a bunch of templates. So you just plug in your brand colors and then plug in your tips. And this is another great way to repurpose it. So you can repurpose it as a caption. You can repurpose it as a graphic. 
and just test to see what captures your audience's attention and what they engage with the most. Obviously reels will reach new people and will probably get the best results, but it's a great way to like work smarter, not harder. When it comes to your content, I've noticed that your videos, like this video performed really well, this one performed well, and they always like, they, they're so in alignment with your passion and what you want. Like this one captures attention right away. It says how you can help a black man heal. And I know that's like huge part of your passion. And you also have this one, 10 signs that you're healing and growing that first shot. This first shot is brilliant. I love it. I love that first shot. It's so cool with like the drink in the foreground and then you in the background and your smile. It's just like such an intriguing shot that you got. So you could even like that clip you could use that as an intro to other videos too. So maybe you repurpose that clip as an intro to test to see if that performs well. And instead of 10 signs, you're healing and growing, you say how you can help a black man heal. I can't think of any other like attention grabbing things, but just playing around with like, oh, you have this clip here that worked really well to capture attention. What else can you teach with that clip? Or like, what else can you share? Just a little idea there. And then finally, I'd love to see you go in a little bit more on like either focusing some of your hooks for people of color or even for men. So this one, it kind of touched both of those. You said how to help a black man heal. So it talks about people of color and men. So maybe for benefits of yoga that can help you heal. Maybe you talk about benefits of doing yoga as a man, because we don't really see a lot of men doing yoga or we don't really see a lot of men doing like self-care and like hey I did aromatherapy today you know like that's a really unique perspective that you have that not a lot of people do have so when you're making these videos of like three ways you can use aromatherapy using some of those other hooks to really capture your specific target audience's attention could be really beneficial all right this video is already a little bit longer than what I thought so I think we're just gonna do three audits and then I'll I'll do another video to continue on with this series. So the foodie flex with Donna, Donna, love, 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 love what you have going on so far. Also, that's my mom's name. Funny foodie flex. Again, I'm looking at username profile photo. It matches perfectly. As you can tell you're in the food niche profile photo communicates that you're in the food niche. So it's perfect. We look at the nameplate food blogger and digital creator that's super search friendly, not just for your target audience, but also for potential brands. So that's a good two in one. Then you have home cook, comfort food, foodie reviews, email collabs, your location, and then a link. So the only thing that I would change here is communicating the value that you provide and basically telling somebody, this is why you should follow me. This is what you will gain when you press the follow button. So instead of saying like home cook, comfort foods, foodie reviews, I would say something like inspiration for the everyday home cook so that you could create comfort foods and staple recipes, you know, staple household recipes. I don't know, something that's going to tell your audience, this is the value that I provide. This is the content I create. And this is how you will benefit when you press the follow button. So what are they gaining? They gain food tips. They are learning food recipes. They learn quick and easy meals. Are you cooking in a specific cuisine? Is it for moms? Like what kind of food? Who is it for? Is it for the everyday home cook? Or is it for somebody who has a little bit extra time? They could put a little bit of extra love in their food. So who is it for? What kind of food? And what do they gain when they press that follow button? So less about you and your content and more about the person you want to follow you. If you need more character space in your bio, instead of putting email collabs, you could just use the little like email envelope emoji. And then it saves you a few characters. So you could really expand on this first sentence. And then I would add a call to action of like what this is. So like check out my TikTok or follow me here. It would be really cool. Hear me out. If you offered some sort of freebie or like a, maybe what's your most popular recipe. If you could give somebody that recipe for free with all of the ingredients list out, you make it in Canva food recipe. There we go. Boom shakalaka. You have like so many templates like that. That's really cool. So maybe you just like make 
two or three pages of this and do like your top two to three recipes, put that as a PDF or download that as a PDF and give it away for free. Like download my top three recipes here. That would be a really cool one to start collecting emails. This video is a perfect example of a pinned post because it introduces you, it introduces what you do. It's just a really, really great pinned post to introduce people who you are and what your brand is about. So Definitely love that as a pinned post. Now for content tips, I have just two tips that I'd love for you to play around with. The first tip, you do this in most of your videos, but starting with text and not just starting with text, but like hook bait text. Like this one does this really well. So it's like jalapenos and onions, grilled cheese, the thayas. Like you know exactly what you're getting from watching this video. So this is a great hook text, but like this one does not have any hook text. And sometimes, or actually most times when somebody is scrolling on their main feed and come across a reel, most of the time it's music. Muted. So you want to think, how can you communicate to your audience in this video if they're listening to it on mute? So maybe while you're editing or you have your team editing, whoever does your editing, watch the video one time through on mute to see like, can somebody gain equal value from watching this through without audio? So that's one thing that I would like to challenge you on. And the second one is showing your face in the beginning. So in the beginning you have like, Hey, this is how I made this. Or like, Hey guys, here's how I make. Yeah. So you have, Hey, this is how I make this. And you have like the final shot or the final product. It's always great to start with that final product look. But I think something that will help with the conversions even more is having that human element. And I know not a lot of people love to show their face on social media. This is why I said this is something to just play around with, test it. So you have the final thing. You don't even got to say anything. You just like scoop and take a bite or like you point to it, hold it up to the camera or you start with it at the camera, move it back point, you know, like doing something like that. And then you have your voiceover with the text explaining what it is. That I think will go a really long way. Alrighty, if you've made it this far and you're not already subscribed to my channel, literally check, go check. Are you, are you subscribed? Are you watching this? Are you subscribed? If you're not, hug the subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you don't miss when I post my next video and I'll see you in the next one. Follow your joy. Bye.